Detective Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a romantic comedy film called, Cashback. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Listless art student Ben Willis lives out his college days with his dear girlfriend Susie until one day, he makes the mistake of breaking up with her. Ben recounts the breakup to be as devastating as a car crash. For him, time slowed down as Susie went on a rage after hearing that he wants to break up with her. Dopey-eyed and unmotivated, Ben drags through the following days in a slog. In the aftermath of the breakup, Susie quickly found solace in a guy named Steve, much to Ben's disappointment. During lunch in the cafeteria, Ben spots Susie and her new boyfriend as he makes his way to a lone table. He is eventually joined by his friend, Sean, who asks about his breakup with Susie. Ben explains that Susie was always looking for something better, whether it's a better party or a better boyfriend to move on to. Since Ben didn't think that he could make her happy, he chose to break things off with her. In response, Sean suggests that Ben should date a beautiful girl, perhaps a model. He reasons that if Ben were dating a beautiful model, Susie would feel competitive and try to win Ben back. Ben takes this advice with a grain of salt as he recalls the various instances where Sean had been dismissed by a woman. Later on, Ben attends one of his art classes. One of them has him sketching a portrait of a nude man modeling in front of the class. While beginning his sketch, he catches the eye of a beautiful girl across the room. Ben's entranced by her, and soon, he finds himself sketching the outline of her jaw, the curve of her lips, and her big, blue, and beautiful eyes. His enchantments dispelled by his art teacher, who urges him to focus on the nude model in front of him as it would be rude not to sketch the voluntarily naked man in front of them. During the next few days, it becomes apparent that Ben isn't taking the breakup well. He loses sleep over this, and now he's left with a full 24 hours to ruminate on his failed relationship with Susie. To make things worse, Ben's haunted by the several echoes of lovemaking through the college dorm walls that permeated his room, pushing him further into the harsh reality that he is now all alone. Overcame by his regret, Ben finally gives Susie a call. Despite his attempts to reconcile with her, Susie firmly answers that their relationships already run its course. This sends Ben spiraling deeper in his despair. For the next couple of nights, Ben does his best to keep himself busy during his free time both in the day and in the night when he's plagued by insomnia. During one of his nighttime misadventures, Ben happens upon a local supermarket. In the supermarket, Ben sees a flyer indicating that the store's looking for someone to man the night shift. Finally, Ben's found the perfect solution to keep himself busy at night. It isn't long until Ben scored an interview with the manager, and soon, he's an official employee of Sainsbury's supermarket. As his employer Jenkins is about to shake his hand, all Ben could think of is that something's about to change in his life. During his night shift, Ben's been staring at a spilled bag of peas for a considerable amount of time. Jenkins comes by and scolds him for staring at the peas and not doing anything. This startles Ben awake from his catatonic state, but he's immediately distracted by a beautiful woman reaching for something while her shorts are lifted to reveal her undergarments. At this point, Ben thinks about how much he loves painting the female form. To him, there's some kind of hidden power that the female body holds, and most women carry this unknowingly. This is when Jenkins slaps Ben on the head, prompting him to finally clean up the bag of peas. As Ben becomes accustomed to his new job, he notes how each of his co-workers handles the art of passing the time. Sharon Ponte, the cashier lady, exhibits the most fundamental aspect of time passing, avoiding the clock and never looking at it. Then, there's Barry Brick Brickman, who approaches the problem differently. Brick's mastered the art of doing anything besides work. In tandem with his foolish misdemeanor is his friend, Matt Stevens. One of their running gags is slipping a recreational adult toy in the shopping baskets of women. Once they are at the checkout counter, Barry and Matt would curiously watch whether each woman would purchase the adult toy. When some of them do purchase it, it would put a smile on their faces. The only one who doesn't engage in the art of time passing is their boss, Jenkins. Jenkins didn't need to pass the time because he relishes every moment pandering to his egoistical sense of self, talking ceaselessly about his life to the board employees. Of all the night shift employees, Ben has the most unusual way of passing the time. In the throes of his deep melancholy, Ben disassociates himself from time and reality. He imagines that time is still and unmoving. He pauses everything that is around him, letting him be free to do what he pleases. At this point, Ben thinks more about his appreciation of the female body. When Ben was very young, their family had taken in a guest, a foreign exchange student from Sweden. Because of the liberated sensibilities of the Swedish culture, the woman did not find it necessary to wear any clothes during the walk from the shower to her room. For Ben, it was only partly perverse. Mostly, he had looked at the woman's body with a deep and genuine appreciation for her beauty. Ben notes that this event was what influenced him to become a painter. During Ben's world of frozen time, 
he would frequently disrobe the beautiful women in the supermarket, and on each aisle, he would sketch their bodies one by one, fully focused on their bare beauty. When he was ready, all Ben needed to do was crack his fingers, and he could return time to its normal course. Back at his dorm during the morning, Ben is visited by his friend Sean. Ben recounts a story of when he and Sean were five. One afternoon, Sean's mother went out shopping, leaving the two boys alone. Sean had the idea of showing Ben some dirty magazines that his parents had hidden in a drawer. Ben was surprised by how the women posed naked in such a shameless manner and didn't quite understand it. Suddenly, Sean's mother walked into the room. Sean rushed to hide the magazines back in the drawer, and the two boys walked up to Sean's mother, and the both of them were unknowingly hard. This led to Sean's mother believing that the two of them were gay. That morning at the dorm, Sean gives his word of advice to Ben once more, Sean tells him he should find a few Natalies. To Sean, a Natalie is a woman to have a one-night stand with. The terminology came from an instance when they were young, Sean had figured out that the women in the dirty magazines were mainly stripped naked because they were being offered a large sum of money. With this newfound knowledge in mind, Sean brought a wad of cash to a girl named Natalie. In exchange, Natalie would show her private parts to Sean. Soon, Natalie became popular with the young boys in their neighborhood, and all of them lined up with money in their hands. During another night shift, Ben encounters Sharon in the locker room. The cute and charming Sharon takes a bite out of Ben's sandwich. A piece of pickle sticks to Sharon's cheek, so Ben awkwardly tries to tell her to wipe it off, but she keeps missing it. Ben meekly wipes the bit of food from her face, and they share a smile before Sharon leaves the room. Ben wants to stop that moment and live in it for a week, but he's only able to slow it down. Sometime later, Ben finds out that Matt had asked Sharon out on a date, which disappointed him. Ben then notes how strange it is that the word crush is used for both warm attraction and a heavy disappointment. Ben then enumerates the crushes that he's had in his life. His main crush was a girl named Tanya Green. When they were in elementary, Tanya had gotten into an accident that ended with a cast on her left arm. Ben notes that what held his fascination the most about Tanya was how she handled the cast with faultless grace. The day that Tanya got her cast off, she was bullied by her classmates because the hairs in her arm had overgrown. Ben approached her when she was crying and cheered her up. Because of this, Tanya became Ben's girlfriend. One afternoon, Ben and Tanya were on the verge of their first kiss, but Ben postponed it for a later time. Ben would regret this decision forever as Tanya and her parents had moved to America the day after. One evening, Jenkins has arranged for a weekend football game, in which he forcibly recruits his employees to participate. During the football game, Sharon's on the side, cheering for the team. Jenkins's team paled in comparison to the other team, and what comes after is one of the most ridiculously pathetic performances ever put on. During the final minute of the game, the score is 26 to 0. Jenkins asks for a timeout and settles for at least a single point as he riles up the team for one last shot. Sadly, Jenkins misses the shot by a hair, and the ball bounces off to Matt. He tries to kick it back to the goal, but it hits Jenkins square in the face. After this, Jenkins lies on the floor with a bleeding mouth. Matt takes Jenkins to the hospital, and the rest of the crew go home, leaving Ben and Sharon alone together. Ben and Sharon stop by a nearby diner, and the two of them get to know each other better. There, Ben discovers that Matt didn't sleep with Sharon. She then shares her dreams with Ben, and Ben does the same. Sharon says that she's always wanted to meet a painter because she imagines that they could see the beauty of things, and that thought was romantic to her. That night, the two catch a fondness for each other. Ben walks Sharon home, and Ben messes up their first kiss by awkwardly kissing her on the cheek instead. The following day, Jenkins announces that he'll be having a birthday party soon, and he's inviting everyone. Sharon asks Ben to go with her to the party as her date, and an overjoyed Ben agrees. Later on, Jenkins tasks Ben with hiring a surprise stripper for his birthday party. For this, he enlists Sean's help, and in exchange, Ben will take him to the party. Sean takes Ben to a strip club, and Sean proceeds to recruit a stripper. The entire time that Ben is there, all he could think of is Sharon. He imagines Sharon in the corner, shrouded in darkness lit only by a glowing pole. Sharon's dressed in a provocative black outfit as she dances around the pole while staring into Ben's eyes, and Ben is completely mesmerized. The night before the party, Sharon checks in with Ben if he still wanted to go with her. Ben says yes, and Sharon kisses him. The gravity and the importance of that kiss could only be fully appreciated by stating that it's the one thing that finally helped Ben sleep. That evening, Ben sleeps until the next afternoon after having been awake for four straight weeks. Ben is then woken up by a phone call from a man who wishes to put his art on display in a gallery. Sadly, it's just Matt and Brick playing another one of their pranks. Ben reports that he doesn't think about Susie very much anymore, and during work hours, he even stopped thinking of the beautiful women there. 
All that's on his mind is Sharon. In the world of frozen time, he draws Sharon over and over, totally enamored by her beauty. It's the night of the party, and everyone is preparing. Ben picks up Sharon from her apartment, and he excitedly tells her about the offer he got from the gallery. Sharon is happy for him, and the two proceed to the party. The party is already well underway when Ben and Sharon arrived. Sean is getting turned down by a girl again, Matt and Brick are dancing ridiculously, and Jenkins is at the DJ station. Ben is surprised to see Susie at the party, and he finds out that her boyfriend Steve is Jenkins's brother. After an awkward encounter with Susie, Ben and Sharon go on to enjoy the party. Eventually, the surprise stripper comes in. She dances in the middle of the room and directly in front of Jenkins, giving him a lap dance. After the dance, the stripper goes up to Sean. He recognizes her, and funnily enough, the stripper is actually Natalie from Sean's childhood. They greet each other and the two of them hit it off near instantly. While Ben is waiting in line for the upstairs bathroom, Susie approaches him. Meanwhile, Sharon is waiting downstairs with Jenkins trying to make a move on her again. As for Brick, he's set to do a stunt that involves him riding a box down a flight of stairs. Everyone gathers around the stairs to watch Brick. At this point, Susie kisses Ben in an attempt to reconcile with him. At this moment, Sharon had looked over the upper floor because Brick was about to slide down the stairs. Sharon sees the kiss between Ben and Susie, making her storm off in a rage. Ben pushes Susie away, and he rushes towards Sharon, who is now about to leave for the door. Ben stops time once again, and he realizes that no matter how long he stays frozen, he cannot undo what had happened. Ben stays there by Sharon's side for two days before letting her go. Ben goes straight to Sharon's apartment and tries to explain everything to her, but Sharon is too blinded by her anger. Ben leaves her apartment, and for the next few days, he spirals into his insomnia once again. Additionally, Ben doesn't see Sharon at work too. The day comes when Ben visits the art gallery that Matt and Brick pretended to call from. The art gallery owner denies having an appointment with him, making him realize that he had just been pranked. But before Ben leaves, the owner spots his sketches of Sharon in his hands. The owner becomes interested, and not long after, Ben is offered a night to display his work in the gallery. One day, Sharon receives an official invitation to Ben's art display titled A Frozen Second. Despite her initial anger with Ben, she decides to visit the gallery. Once she arrived that evening, she is surprised to see that each artwork there is about her, with hundreds of different paintings all depicting her. As Sharon stands in awe, she catches Ben's attention, and they lock eyes. Ben tries to explain once again what had happened at the party, but Sharon tells him he doesn't need to explain. The art display expresses more than what words could. Ben then kisses Sharon, and time stops, but this time, both Ben and Sharon can move in the frozen world. Ben takes Sharon out in the snow with a thousand snowflakes suspended in the air. The lovers share a kiss once more in the world of frozen time. Ben thinks about how love is always there if you look for it and that once in a while, you have to stop for a minute or else you might miss it. Detective Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a romantic comedy film called, Cashback. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Listless art.